Hey there, Steve from 3D Universe here to share with another of our products. This is the headphone composite shot importer that we have created. Now this works hand in hand with CamTrack AR. It's an iOS app. And here you see the iOS app running. And basically all you need to do is move it around so that it can work out where everything is, where surfaces are in your uh, scene. You'll see I do quite a bit of moving around. I'm wanting to play something on the floor, so I go nice and close to the floor. Once I'm happy with that, I click to accept the floor plane. You see it's now gone orange uh, or yellow. Uh, that's now identified that is the floor. I'm going to place a character right about here. So first I'm going to turn off my auto focus and auto exposure. We can also turn off that 3D layer because we don't need that. And our idea is we're wanting to place a an item right there. So we are going to actually create an anchor point that we can pick up later on. So there we go, we've created one anchor point. If you've created the anchor point in the wrong place to delete, you just move over it. Click on that delete button and there it's gone. In the free version, you can create one anchor point and in the paid version, you can create multiple anchor points. Um, but one anchor point is good for us. So we've started our recording. We're going to do the movement. You'll notice everything's staying nice and fixed on our on our uh, video, which is exactly what we want. We're going to place a character exactly in that, that spot there. So let's just finish off our recording and there we're done. Okay, now we're going to go to files and there's only two files we're actually interested in. It's the HFCS, uh, which is the main file and the video itself. And I'm going to just share those and send it to my iMac Pro. And there we go. So here's the original video recorded by the CamTrack AR software. And that will go along with the HFCS file, the composite file, which will contain all of the motion data. There we go, so we can get into our Dare Studio. So here in Dare Studio, I've got one of my little characters. This little guy is sitting at the exact center of the screen. You can see the X and Y. Uh, X, Y, and Z um, axes there. So he's sitting at exactly at the center of the screen and our, my idea is that he's going to be centered on the video that we just took. So it's simple enough. Here is our uh, script to do the import. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to run the script and I'm going to go through all of these uh, settings one by one just so you can see what each of them do. Uh, so first thing you want to do is you want to open the composite shot. You'll see there's the composite shot that I, I just shared from my iPad. So we're going to click on it and open it and it's going to give us a bit of a rundown of what it's found in there. Uh, it's found the single anchor point that we created. It's worked out what our uh, camera the focal length is going to be 30 frames per second total number of, of frames total video length and here's your video dimensions notice it's not HD it's not 1920 by 1080 it's a slightly different resolution um, and that's just a limitation with uh, the AR software on iOS at this stage but that might change okay so the first thing you'll see here is we can create 3D anchor points in scene. These anchor points are going to be invisible in the render, uh, but they'll create, it'll create geometry in our scene that we can then go and align our, our uh, various 3D elements up with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, just run that one. And let's go process. You'll see at the bottom, it's created all of the frames. And you'll see here at the top, it has now selected our HFCS camera. And on the side here in our scene, you'll see you've got the HFCS anchor points. And if I drop that open, there's, there's just the one anchor point. And you'll see in my scene, there is the, I don't want to move the camera around. Let's go to perspective view rather. You'll see there is the anchor point, uh, the initial anchor point. Uh, and it isn't actually in the center of our scene at all. So what we're wanting to do is, first of all, we're wanting to make sure that that anchor point is moved over to the center of the scene. So we're going to run our 
our script again and you'll see the second option is center scene on first anchor point now it's going to only center it on the first anchor point so if you have mul multiple anchor points um, it's just that very first anchor point that you selected is going to be the center of your scene so we're going to select that option run the process again you'll see it, it removed the, the previous one and if I hide my tortoise you'll now see that the first point is exactly in the center of our scene so if I put my tortoise back there he's sitting exactly in the right spot and if I select my camera I can actually run it back and you can see how the camera is actually tracking exactly the way I did the real camera work uh, when I recorded the video. So everything's looking good so far. Okay, let's go through some of the other options. Uh, our third option here is offset view to face scene center at frame zero. Now this, this specific option is if your first direction that you're looking uh, with the camera has the anchor point off to the side and you're wanting to actually offset the view uh, to face the the center um, in this case we've only got the one anchor point and we have the anchor point already at the middle so doing doing that is actually not going to uh, make any difference let's run it for the next option so the next option you'll notice here on my side um, it's not looking exactly uh, from the front to the back along this this axis and now if you've set up your lighting on on this scene on the character uh, to be specifically from the front um, it would be nice to actually have that camera view um, angled towards the front and that is what this reorientate view to face front is for you'll see if I select that option run the process again you'll see now we're looking directly down the z-axis so everything is perfectly centered towards the front so that that means if you set up your lighting your lighting works nicely from a front view uh, it's going to be perfect so that is our next option okay finally now we come to a couple of uh, options for the plane at the moment um, there's let me just go out of here right so if i was to go to a rendered view you'll see at the moment it's just going to have the the default floor um, i've got my ground set on there and it just has the the default floor what can be a problem is an elong elongated shadow like this could end up uh, looking very odd in our, our scene and that's where the next uh, couple of options come in so let's go back to just our texture shaded view and run this again so now what I can do is I can say create a 3d plane centered on the first anchor point and what that's going to do is it's going to create a three meter by three meter uh, plane and then it's going to apply an opacity map to it that gradually fades out you'll see when I do that there is the plane that is being created so it's added to our scene here the floor plane you can see there and basically that floor plane it is added in opacity map so that it it fades out uh, which is going to just help a transition to the the scene so what i'm wanting to do is i'm wanting to use the iray render engine so i'm going to run that script again and this time i'm going to set up a shadow catcher and you'll see what the shadow catcher does for us if i go into our render i re render you'll see the shadow catcher now fades out whereas the ground was extending out a little bit far uh, because we have a, that opacity map on the the ground plane uh, it's now fading out nicely and transitioning nicely into our scene let's go back to texture shade you can also add reflection and that's if your object is sitting on a reflective surface you can automatically add on that that reflection and that's going to just mean that uh, when we go back into our 
uh, IRA render engine. It's going to just have a bit of reflection. It's going to be a bit hard to see. You can see a little bit there just because we're over a white surface. It's a little bit hard. If I was to go and change my background to something dark, there we go, you'll be able to see that it's actually catching a little bit of that reflection. You can see his arms there and his feet. Okay, let's go back to our texture shader view. So our last option here is set up render animation settings. And what that's going to do is if I go here in my render settings and I'll go to the general tab, you'll see at the moment it is set to do a still image, which is only of the current current frame. The render target's a new window and the image path, um, well the, the image type is a JPEG and image path hasn't been put in. So what that last setting is going to do is going to create a couple of updates there. So you'll see it's changed the render type to image series because we, we basically want to render each frame of this, this animation to a separate image. Uh, it's also put in our render range. It's put in a base name. Um, just so that we can identify it easily and it's changed the type to uh, PNG and PNG obviously has the opacity in the background where JPEG wouldn't and the only thing you need, would need to do here is you'd need to actually uh, select a path where you want to um, save it out to. Okay so if we were to render this out what we will end up with is a whole lot of images like this rendered over a transparent background. And here is where we now need to actually uh, composite uh, each of these individual frames back over our video. And there's a number of different ways we can do it. I'm going to show you two different ways. Uh, one is using Premiere. If you happen to have Adobe Premiere, um, I can show you how that works in here. So in Adobe Premiere, this is a new uh, a new project that I've created. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in, that's my background video uh, that you would recognize. And then additionally, I'm going to drag in the folder that holds all of the renders. Each of the renders, if I open that up, you'll see all the renders are named um, sequentially, which is very important, but that is done automatically. And in uh, Premiere, what we need to do is we need to select all of these because these are individual images and we're wanting to create a, an animation sequence out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of them, right click, change the speed and duration. You'll see at the moment by default they're set to each display for five seconds, which is not what we want in at all. Um, this duration basically works, uh, it's hours, minutes, seconds and then frames. We're working on 30 frames per second so that that frame would go from 0 to uh, 29 and then back to 0 again. So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to only display each of these images for a single frame. So we would set it up like that with just the one at the end. I'm going to say OK. And if we close this we can now drag that on top. You'll see it actually fits perfectly. And in our preview vin window there, you'll see it has been nicely composited. We're not going to want to have that. Uh, we're not going to want to have the, vid the audio. Okay, so you can see it's been nicely composited. Let's just go to full view. And simple as that, you would then be able to just export your media and that would export that video with our tortoise composited on top. So the other the other option I'm going to show you is uh, the Vinci Resolve which is a free program and let's just open a new project in Vinci Resolve and this is what you would do to uh, get things set up here. First of all, at the bottom here, you'd need to click to the media and then we can drag in our render folder. 
you'll see the nice thing with DaVinci Resolve is it automatically actually creates that as a sequence. If for some reason it doesn't and you end up with a whole ton of pictures here, all you need to do is in this view, in the media, up at the top here you click on those three dots, frame display mode and make sure that sequence is selected there. But you can see for ours it is, it is working perfectly. So all we need to do now is just drag that down into our media pool and then we can switch to back to our, our edit and view. Alright, now I'm going to quickly pull in the, the video. We'll have that, there is the backdrop. What we must do is just right click on here, clip attributes, and you'll see there we go, it's got video frame rate at 24. We want it to be 30 to match our video. And now if we drag it on, down, now the two are perfect, and there we've got our composited view. So that would be how to do it in DaVinci Resolve. The final video. So there's the footage we captured in Camtrack AR. There's previewed frames in DAS Studio, the rendered frames in DAS Studio, and the final composited video in whatever uh, whatever software you want to do. And that's about it. If there's something that I missed out, please ask me in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe.